Um, what's your zombie apocalypse plan? Zombie apocalypse plan, Rich? Uh, I'm gonna hide behind my wife. I don't know. Because she's the machete. She's the machete. And uh, she's gonna chop her way to freedom. I like thinking that if, like, in Walking Dead, you know, there's such characters, there was, there's the, the woman that has, like, the two swords that she fights with. Oh, sure. Michelle, yeah, and, and I like to think of machete like having a big ass machete. Yeah, right? yeah, sure. This is a literal machete. This is a yeah. uh, metaphysical right. machete she's carrying in this scenario. Yeah. We'll line up right behind the machete. Yeah, the kids. They just play. follow her. Matt, what's your plan? I'm going marshmallow fluff and peanut butter by the caseload. I'm gonna sit in the corner and enjoy myself and just until they come get you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no reason to fight it. You know? I'm going to take my own life, because I feel like this is going to be easier for me now, because it's going to happen anyway. I'm not going to win. And what are you going to do with these zombie apocalypse? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. I didn't understand the question. Yeah, no, I'm going to let it happen. <laughs> uh, no, I, yeah, because I know they're going to get me. I know it's just a matter of time for them to eat, and I don't want to eat my zombies, so I'm going to do, do it for them. And then when they become a zombie, I'm coming to get rich. <laughs> so I'm not finding a brain up here. Uh, <laughs> good brain. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, That's good. Thank you for your question. You? Hi, how are you? I'm Amy. Hello, Amy. I just want to know if you guys have a favorite improv game. Rob, you're a special. I'm a who? <laughs> I'm a spatula. That's his favorite game, is Rob, you're a spatula. Yeah. And every game, I'm a spatula. And, and match an egg, and I watch them try to flip each other. <laughs> and see. That's our favorite. That's our favorite play. I like good old fashioned, you know. Uh, give me a, a place a uh, relationship and go from there, you know. Our favorite improv game is called No But. Yeah, that's Richard's favorite. <laughs> I, had, I tried to teach Rich the, Our the Yes And. Yeah. Yes And is rule number one of improv. And it's a great, it's a great rule to have in conversation with anybody in else. In life! In life. You know, it, 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 rather than denying them their truth, you say yes and... No, but what you actually should do, honestly, is... <laughs> When they start to say something. The thing is, that wasn't even funny, because that's the you. I mean, that, that's what you do. Yes, and <laughs> you don't like it. <laughs> oh, that's... Wow! Uh, yeah, so the... Rich likes the no button. <laughs> nah. Like, hey, you're the, you know, you're the king of England. Nah. <laughs> and see. <laughs> but, but you know what? You're, you're from the interval. Because you make it funny, but it no button. Sure. But no bunch of like, right? Damn it! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's fun. It's a fun Are you an improv person? Is that uh, something you do? I really like the party game, like party quirks. What is that? Oh, everybody, everybody gets a quirk. And you don't know what everyone else's quirk is. And they show up, you're having a party. Ooh, oh. I'm it, and you show up at the door. Oh, no, you go out of the room, they give everyone quirks. Right. Then you come back in, it's your party. Ooh, I'm so excited. You open the door, and you come in doing your quirk, and I have to guess what it is. Oh, like, oh, we just got fallen arches. Sure, exactly. <laughs> I'm, party. Party. I'm sorry about your bull legs. No, no but uh, I can't say a party. It's not a party, we're in a spaceship. Oh, and see. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's a fun one. I like that one too. That's a good one. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a great one. So thank you very much for your question. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Hi guys, I just want to say, you guys like my actions. So thank you for being so funny. I will. Huh? Uh, my question is, if they made a movie of your life, who would play you? Oh, man. <laughs> Which kind of the field day was with babies. <laughs> No, we already know who would play you. The guy who already played you in the pilot, where you didn't get to play yourself. Chris Gardner, yeah. Chris Gardner played you. I had, I had this story, we tell it on the podcast, basically, if someone wrote a, a show, TV show, I was one of the main characters, I auditioned, I didn't get the role to play myself. Because Fox <laughs> said I wasn't good looking enough. <laughs> to play myself. 
So they cast another guy, Chris Clark, and Rich loves that story, so that's... Which, by the way, I've known Rob for 15 years. I heard that story six months ago. I've yeah. never heard that story. I had only heard that story because Hank and Paul, your old friends, told it on the podcast. Yeah. That was a, that's a crazy story. Yeah. Uh, I would be played by the uh, animated corpse of Don Knox. <laughs> Drake Roger. Woo! Ooh, wow. Wow, yeah. very sexy. Wow, what a trio that would be. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'm a third grade teacher. My daughter's a theater teacher in Texas. And I was wondering if there was any teacher that inspired you to do what you do and love. And one more thing. Rob, I made this for you and Ruth. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. This is sweet. I'll, I'll answer your question as you're walking. What was the question? Oh, yeah. um, oh, that is so adorable. Thank you so much. You're so cute. Thank you. Oh, pink. Your favorite color. It's a yard dog. It's a yard dog. <laughs> um, so, uh, my uh, theater teacher in college was amazing. His name's David Downs, and he, he, he taught me just like so much about the classics, about acting, about theater. Um, about relating to people in, in roles, and I, I, I think about it all the time, but I carry it with me uh, even to this day. It's the, it's, it's the tools that I use as an actor. He gets all that credit. I did. I had a teacher, specifically we were talking to acting teachers, I had an acting teacher all through my high school years who didn't work at my high school. I took class outside of my high school in downtown Nashville. Her name was Ruth Sweet. And she taught everybody, you know, Nashville was not a big acting community at the time, I'm sure it's a lot bigger now. And everybody took this woman. But well. she was as, from New York and she was just she used Yiddish words and but she was fantastic. We, there was a whole team group of us who all took her class every summer. And I took the bus downtown and took the class. And I just learned a ton uh, from her about you could listen, the techniques, all the things, but also I just learned to love it. She just had a joy that she brought to her approach to the class. And that kind of permeated everything. And so, and she was just so supportive. It was just so, she was a great lady. Um, I, uh, I had an acting teacher named uh, Jeremiah Comey. He wrote a book called The Art of Film Acting. He was a, an older fella, and he was wildly passionate about directing. He never got his chance to direct. And we would sit in chairs very close to each other in the acting class. It was kind of like a Meisner technique thing. So you'd sit here, and the other person would sit there, and you'd both have two cameras uh, you know, on you over the shoulder of the other person, and there'd be a TV screen just above your head for the class to watch. And he would sit there in his chair, like opposite us, and he'd be like, you know, be in your seat, and he'd be like, you know, trying to connect. And, You'd be like, D -d 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 say it again, say it, say it again, D -d 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 say it again. And he would say, say it again so many times you'd start crying and create a performance. So he taught me that if you suffer enough, you can get great performances out of actors. It was lovely. <laughs> and that's why you weep at every role. And that is true. I, I depend on tears to sell my acting whenever possible. <laughs> what was your name in the soap opera, Doctor? Griffin Monroe. Dr. Griffin Monroe. That's right. <laughs> That's the best name ever. Dr. Griffin Monroe. And not only was I a neurosurgeon, I was also a priest <laughs> and a stripper. How <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they all? Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Hi, this is for our Robin Rich. So I love the, uh, the podcast. And as first time viewers, of the Supernatural, what character or storyline has surprised you the most? Has, has surprised me? Yeah. Um, I could, I'll tell you that. The, the storyline in the early seasons, uh, the character was Gordon, and the actor was Sterling K. Brown. Yeah. I thought, I thought he did like one episode. Me too, I just thought he came and win, and his, the fact that he kept coming back, it was so good. Well, we, now we know, he's a giant movie star, but I mean, at the time, he, he was just such a good uh, nemesis for Sam and Dean, and also the episodes he did were so well written that, that you, you couldn't just dislike him, you also felt for him, like he, he played such a great character 
it was just elevated television, and I didn't realize how involved his character was in the show. I think that was a really cool and surprising story. Robert? Um, I, it's been a lot. Uh, I didn't realize that Jensen, that Dean dies and goes to hell, and then gets resurrected again, basically by Misha. Like, Rich and I have an ongoing joke, we're like, oh no, Vincent's near death, you know, Dean's near death, end of show. Uh, but then he actually did die. Like, I think I believe that. That was at the end of season three, and he dies and goes to hell, he goes to hell, he goes to hell, he dies. Yeah. He, he actually dies. And I'm, so I didn't know there was anything, and, and I didn't know the complete story about that Sam had superpowers. Sam had superpowers. I know, He's moving a virtual chip. He's killing demons with his nerve. Oh, sorry, we should say we're moving. Spoiler alert. Okay, yeah, that's all you can do. You may not be there yet. Yeah, we're we'll going to make sure. Season two, three. We're always going to talk about Supernatural, so. Uh, yeah, so that, that, that was all surprising to me. Uh, I was on the edge of my seat, I was like, oh fuck, he's really dead. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess that means the show's over, I can only assume that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank I, you. I also know, have to do, sorry, real quick, that Castiel's entrance, they thought he was a bad guy at first. Yeah. I thought everybody was be like, oh, he's got the wings and all, it's, it's him, he's here, we love him. But it wasn't, he was like, shooting the dead, they tried to shoot him, trying to kill Castiel, what happened to Crazy. Anyway, that was new to me. That's a uh, good one. Yeah, thank you. Good question. Any idea what you said? You said you didn't know Castiel was not a bad guy. You know what bad guy? You thought he was a good guy. Turned out he was a bad guy. Not really, but it was Look. close. <laughs> Some of the words were the words I said. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ashley. This is also my first convention. Oh, thank you. congratulations. We all have embarrassing moments in public, so what is each of your guys' most embarrassing moment in public? I passed out while standing up for a friend at his wedding. <laughs> I was, uh, I just kind of had a panic attack. I'm up there in front of 200 people, it was a very hot room. And in my mind I thought, boy, the most embarrassing thing you can do right now is pass out. And I almost convinced myself. Next thing I know, I'm on the ground, I open my eyes and I see the priest, the groom, and my buddy who's a doctor. And I was like, oh fuck, that just happened. I was really not this good. And to make it worse, it was like the early 2000s, and I was on the show Felicity at the time, and the, the, the woman he was marrying was a big fan of that show. So she had this program, and basically had our bios. It was like, this guy's from Hollywood, and da 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 da. So I kind of felt like all eyes were on me a little bit, which made it worse. Oh man, so then they sit me down next to my wife at the time, and she's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm just embarrassed. Like, all right, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna get back up there and you're gonna walk that, the, the woman down the aisle, because I have a partner, you know, a bridesmaid, I can walk down the aisle. So I had to get up at the end of the wedding, walk down the aisle. Hi, yeah, uh, just passed out, that was me. <laughs> and later on that night, I was in the bathroom hiding out in a stall. I was so embarrassed. And I heard these guys come in as I'm like hiding out the stalls. And they're like, yeah, I heard he had an iron deficiency. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't drugs, it was... You said it really wasn't drugs. You're in the toilet. That's what I heard. Did you pass out for being too handsome? Ah. Blush. Most embarrassing story. Uh, Rob and I were doing Comic-Con, and we're walking around, and I turned around. We're doing live on live from the floor stuff. And I turned around, and Rob is soaking wet. Like somebody hit him with a balloon. And I go, this is also one of my most embarrassing yeah. things. And I'm like, what the, what the fuck happened? It was the same thing. I get panicky sometimes. Lots of people are around. Well, and also, he'd been, he'd been talking to, uh, you know, I was up all night drinking. A licensed IPA the night before. Yeah. <laughs> with you. Yeah, but I, for whatever reason, like, for whatever reason, I'm in the middle of Comic Con, it's 10 billion people, and we're filming live. Yeah. And he turns around, and I'm pale, I'm like, oh, fuck. Soaking wet. I thought he was going to pass out again. <laughs> and I thought that somebody hit him with a water balloon. And I'm like, who did that to you? And, and, and I'm talking about nobody. And I'm like, I don't feel well. Like, I wouldn't either. You got hit by a water balloon. Let's get the camera on. Let's get the camera on this, guys. We're live. Look at this. And I'm like, oh, there's no pale, wet. They had to change my t-shirt. I got, I got another I got another one though. Most embarrassing story. Rob and I are at a party at Comic-Con. <laughs> Rob is 
to. We're going to develop something. He'd been, he'd been working on his, on his alphabet, working on the letters IPA, for a good chunk of the evening. And he got really upset and stormed off and left the party. And I was there at the party, and I'm like, what happened? And so I had to go look for the bouncer. I'm kind of looking around, and Rob, Rob, he's like, looking for uh, a little fella, kind of bugged out. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he just took off that way. I'm like, whoa. So I, I call him, and he's like, fuck up, Rich. I'm lost. I'm like, where are you? I don't know. I'm lost, Rich. I'm like, well, all right, dude, where, I mean, okay. Hail the cab. How do I hail the cab, Rich? What are we doing? Like, raise your arm. It's up. Is there a cab coming by? No. Well, it's going to take a second. You've got to wait for a cab to come by. Cab comes by. Can't stop. What now? Get in the cab. And, and then I, I give him the address of where we are. And I said, come back here. And I'm going to get you to the hotel. We're going to call that. We're done. We're going to get you to the hotel. All right, all right. I give Rob the address. He tells the cab driver. The cab driver brings him to the party. Back where I was. He gets out. Fuck that bitch. You got lost. I'm like, look, we're here now. We just need to get you back to the hotel. And I said, out of curiosity, ask the cab driver, where did you pick him up? Where did you find him? And when he told me, I realized he picked him up in front of our hotel. Rob <laughs> I didn't realize I was home. So we got back in the cab and just went The next time I remember finding that, the ticket for the cab, my father like, we took the cab last night? I just didn't forget that I did. Uh, good times. Uh, Matt, any embarrassing story to come up? Uh, no, but I look forward to telling one in the future, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah, thank you!